Talking today to John Kamau, who is the general manager of Jammy Telecom. John, you and I spoke four months ago about the test of, at that point, of your GPOM network, which is a fibre to the home network. What has happened in that four months? Uh, within the four months, we've been able to do uh, a rollout in a place called Lovington in Nairobi. And uh, we've also done uh, one of the uh, high end uh, suburban called Karen. So this is a free functional uh, rollout where we're already connecting customers in these areas. And how many homes have you passed? Uh, in Karen, we're looking at uh, around 3,000 homes. Uh, in Lovington, a uh, similar number. Okay, so you're coming up towards the 10,000 homes passed at this point? Yes. And what's your expectation in terms of how many people will subscribe within those homes passed in the first phase? Okay, our initial, um, our initial target, our initial expectation is around 30% penetration. But as we move along, uh, we believe that uh, the demand will actually uh, increase. And this will be actually prepared by, you know, uh, like what I was telling you, people having more reasons to be on the net, either for cloud applications or uh, wanting to work from home. And the long-term plan is to cover how much of the country? I mean, our, our initial target right now is to cover the two main towns, that is Mombasa and Nairobi. And that will give you a total of how many homes passed at this point? Uh, we are looking at around 100,000 homes. Okay, and over what sort of time scale are you? Uh, probably around three years from from there, yeah. okay. And when we'd originally talked about this, you had given me the the total vision of triple play with voice and TV and whatever. What's the experience been now that you now that you're actually selling to the customer? Okay, right now for us is that uh, most customers are looking for basic connectivity to the net. Uh, obviously, our package comes in with the, with the voice. But again, uh, very few people are using fixed voice nowadays because of the competing technologies like the mobile phone and uh, things like uh, Skype. Now, on the triple play, we, we do have the platform, mm -hmm. but uh, as we said, uh, we're also seeing a lot of what you call over the top uh, operators, people who not necessarily are not operators but are giving services uh, out there. They are, as long as the user is connected the, onto the net, then they're able to access those services. So there's quite a lot of download activity going on at the uh, moment. A lot. Yes. But in terms of the content side of things, you've got an IPTV head end, haven't you? Yes, we do. But you're sort of caught in a chicken and egg situation, aren't you? Yes. The, issue, the IPTV, uh, the main issue is the content, where you get the content, not really the platform. Uh, and uh, for you to uh, be very attractive to content providers, you must have the numbers. And for us, we started out with building up the numbers then get the content uh, providers uh, to come and partner with us. And what do, you think, what do you think the sort of critical mass is that will start to interest those content providers? Uh, I think uh, for our market today, the moment you hit um, 3,000 uh, and above, uh, any uh, of the competing uh, content providers will, will uh, definitely start talking to you. So people like Wananchi and DSTV and people like that will start saying, oh, this is an interesting distribution method yeah. if you reach that scale. Yes, that's true. Okay. Going back to cloud computing, um, how many people in Kenya are offering cloud computing services for um, small and medium-sized enterprises? We do have about uh, five operators who have come out uh, offering the cloud computing. But again, uh, my view of cloud computing is uh, as long as you're on the net, you can actually access the services, uh, even ones which are offered from outside the country. Today, I'm using uh, one of the uh, latest applications, MyRP, which is actually hosted, I think, by Google, by Verizon. So yeah. we have five of them, but as long as users are connected to the internet, they are able to access any of the uh, available. So pe people like Safaricom and IS and Quintica are all offering these kinds of services? Yes, they are. Okay. And you were telling me earlier that the GPON network is future-proof. So describe to me what the next iteration of the GPON network will bring. Okay, today you're talking about uh, on the, the, first, or the first phase of GPON. It's a one gigabit pipe uh, shared among a number of users. Now, vendors are already preparing for the next phase, whereby a user will be able to get a gigabit by themselves. 
and uh, I think uh, they probably won't stop there. We'll right. See so trials are being run on that basis. Users will also be able to get up to a lambda to themselves. Once you get the lambdas, today lambdas have been pushed up to 100 gig. Yeah. So it's actually feature proof you know, as far as uh, we are concerned in terms of meeting the end user's requirements. So what's your view of competing with something like LTE? Um, as I said, the LTE, all these technologies, LTE, WiMAX and cable uh, systems, they all have caps. They can either do up to a maximum of a uh, certain capacity. And uh, like LTE is a shared resource. So the throughput that you get is not predictable. It actually depends on the number of people that are connected on a sector. But what we've seen is that there are some new technologies uh, like the femtocell technology, whereby now the individual is actually getting a small base station within their houses. So you'll still use the LTE as a technology between your CPE, that small base station, you know, it's actually a private base station. Mm. Then the backhaul from that base station actually uses broadband. And most of them are actually using, going to use uh, Japan. Okay. And you were talking earlier about what you're able to achieve with WiMAX. What's, what's the maximum you can do with WiMAX? Yeah. WiMAX, it all depends on the spectrum and the number of people who are hooked up. And also, the, it's statistical. So you can actually get one single user hogging down the whole, whole mm. center. So our experience has shown like, today, effectively, you cannot offer a sustainable uh, throughput of over 2 megabits if you have quite a number of users on it. Yeah, the only thing that can give you that kind of sustainable throughput is uh, the wire, I mean the hard technology is the wire technology, either the copper or, or, or the fiber. And it's not just um, household customers, you're also getting business customers on the yes. network. Yes. So describe the types of customers that are coming onto the network from the corporate side. Yeah, from the corporate side you find that uh, in some of the residential areas, and especially like as Nairobi is growing, it's very hard now to distinguish between uh, a business area and a commercial area. There are people who are running small businesses within the houses, and there are also people running big businesses within the, the residential areas. So we do have a mixture of uh, uh, both uh, enterprise and uh, residential users. So what would be the maximum connection that a corporate has taken off you? Um, most of them, uh, we look at uh, 30 to 40 MB, depending on the kind of institution it is. But for educational institutions, they normally go up to even a gigabit for education institutions. But for most corporate, for business applications, most of them are ranging between 30 and 50 megabits. Okay. And if you compare that with um, two years ago, maybe three years ago, what were they taking at that point? Uh, the biggest of them were taking, the richest would probably take about two megabits. So there's been a, almost a ten time... Yes, yes, yes. It's a big change. And. Presumably, if you were to predict in three years' time what they will be taking, what do you think they'll be taking then? I think uh, we are moving to the era of 100 megabits, and uh, the reason for this is again now the, 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 the cloud computing. So the moment you move to the cloud, then it means that the demands for stable and high-speed connectivity becomes even more, uh, more important for the organization. So the moment you throw away your servers and now depend on the cloud, then you probably have to pay a uh, compensation by having a very high speed connectivity between your business and the, and the net. John, thanks for talking to me today. Welcome.